Over the decades, great science fiction has suggested caution when dealing with beings created to be all-powerful. Pokemon took a cue from this from the very first generation, with Mewtwo. Generation 5 was intended to be a soft reboot, with many new Pokemon added having clear parallels to those in Generation 1. For example, the Conkeldur line was like a new Machamp line. Did this include a parallel to Mewtwo? Well, not in typing, but in concept certainly, as Team Plasma took a fossil, revived it, then modified and enhanced it with the goal of creating the most powerful Pokemon in existence, which included giving it a cannon on its back. Indeed, Genesect is conceptually Generation 5's Mewtwo, which adds the absurdity that it was ever allowed in OU at all, let alone multiple times and not even to be instantly banned. Volcarona, Mega Scizor, and Insect Plate Arceus, you can eat your many-legged hearts out. This is the story of the most broken bug in the game. Genesect first burst onto the scene in Black and White 2. Players who had played the unofficial Dreamworld OU metagame in Black and White 1, which was a metagame where unreleased Pokemon and unreleased hidden abilities were allowed, had already been aware of its insane power, as it established itself as one of the most terrifying Pokemon in that tier. That was in a metagame with unrestrained Sandrush Excadrill and Shadow Tag Chandelure. In Black and White 2 OU, Genesect was instantly and equivocally the best Pokemon with Stab U-Turn, a perfect special attacking move pool, great speed, and its download ability powering with its high attacking stats even further. It was pretty much uncountable with just its Choice Scarf set. The only Pokemon safe against it was Heatran, which of course was one U-Turn into Dugtrio away from death. A Pokemon being broke with a Scarf set was surely a sign of the most broken Pokemon ever, right? Well, yes, but that didn't stop people from wanting to play with this new toy, which has historically been the case for many clearly busted new Pokemon that some inexplicably claim not to be broken, a tradition dating back to another Pokemon obviously broken to that point of absurdity, Diamond and Pearl Garchomp. Those who were around for X and Y Age Slash will recall similarly infuriating debates. We can refer to this phenomenon as current gen blindness. Now, of course, Genesect wasn't just the best choice scarfer in the tier. That already made it the best Pokemon in the tier, a mind shattering conceit, but it did so many other ridiculous things. Things. It fit on literally every style of team and made them better for it. It was effectively Gold Silver Crystal Snorlax. Beyond being insanely broken on its own, Genesect's perfect pairing with Dugtrio also enabled other super broken threats, like Tornado's Therion on Rain and Venusaur on Sun, both of which were infinite back in the day. It preyed on opponents expecting it to be scarfed with a vicious Expert Belt set, whose power boost on its many super effective hits from its incredible coverage turned it to an even more efficient KO machine. Some players noticed that it didn't even need the Extra Belt's extra power, so they slapped the Focus Sash on it and said, Lo and behold, you can no longer threaten now offensively. It would stand the Landris Incarnate Earth Power or Rain Caldeo's Hydro Pump and KO it back with ease. It was so absurdly good at grabbing KOs, how could anyone argue against it? Well, the main argument was that while quite fast, it wasn't that fast without the Choice Scarf, and the Scarf sets locked it into a move, so it could pivot around and out offense reasonably. This was very much not the case in practice, especially with the Sash set, but it was pretty much all that held Genesect back from the ban hammer that many players had been begging to use on the big robot bug from day one. Then the Rock Polish set came around, and that was the end of outspeeding or playing around Genesect. With the million switches it forced, as well as its solid defensive typing and natural bulk, Genesect was able to easily find a free turn to Rock Polish and shrug off desperation, priority moves in equal measure. It blasted through the entire metagame with such unstoppable force that even the staunchest proponents of its non-brokenness were forced to reconsider their stance. Any one of those sets would have made Genesect too much to deal with, but the fact that it could do all of them, yikes. It took several months, but eventually, through great effort, persistence, and exasperating arguments, the player base managed to rid the OU tier of Genesect. It doesn't end there though. Genesect could truly do no wrong in Generation 5, as it had instantly cemented itself as a top tier uber Pokemon as soon as Black and White 2 had come around too. It only used its Scarf set in this much faster metagame, but that was more than fine, because this Scarf set was enough to make it the single best Pokemon in the tier. Yes, better than Kyogre, or any form of Arceus. Stab, download boosted U-turns, let it run circles around the metagame, slamming tier staples in Mewtwo, Darkrai, and the Soul Dew Lottie twins, as well as pretty much everything that it hit neutrally, which was a lot. Of course, its frantic U-turn spam paired particularly well with the spikes that characterized Black and White 2 Ubers. It was surprisingly adept defensively too, being able to withstand the Dark Pulses, Shadow Sneaks, Extreme Speeds, Ice Beams, Psy Shocks, and Psy Strikes spammed throughout the tier. In a pinch, it could even prevent the opponent from getting a free KO with Draco Meteor. Scarf Genesect was a staple on all sorts of Ubers teams, and was considered by some to be downright required on Hyper Offense. Generation 5 Genesect was the perfect Pokemon for its time. Before we go forward into Generation 6 and beyond, if you did enjoy this video so far, make sure you leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. I'm on my way to 400,000 subscribers, and you can help me get there. I upload 
Pokemon discussion videos three to four times a month, and I upload competitive Pokemon every single day. In Generation 6, we once again fell prey to our hubris, our arrogance, our self-righteous belief that we could contain such a monstrosity. In the wake of monstrously powerful Mega Evolutions, we thought Genesect would be just fine. Never mind the fact that it now had Blaze Kick, Extreme Speed, and a Stab Iron Head that walloped the newly added Fairy type super effectively, making for a hilariously overpowered new set and choice ban. If it got the download boost, good night. Plus one choice band U-turns, extreme speeds, iron heads, they were just absurd. Because of the way the plus one boost interacts with Genesect's attack stat already boosted by choice band, it was much stronger than merely having plus two attack, which already would have been absurd. Gen 3 players will be familiar with the concept. It's the same as Choice Band Metagross that gets a Meteor Mash boost and becomes way stronger than plus 2. Genesect's other sets, of course, return with a vengeance and develop more new ones at a pace faster than anyone could keep up with. Even with this new and constantly improving Genesect, we didn't have the sense to at least kick it out quickly. No. We let it stick around and it punished us. Extra Belt, Hidden Power, Ground Smash, and Heat Ran into Dust. Specs, Bug Buzzes, Blowing Holes into So Called Resist. It's seemingly endless array of sets never running out of ways to torment opponents, effortlessly shredding the entire metagame into ribbons. Who could have foreseen the ways in which it blasted apart everything in its path? Fortunately, we eventually got wise in Can Genesect. Better late than never, of course, but it still took a perplexingly long time before we reached that point. Then again, Genesect was banned at the same time as Mega Lucario, another Pokemon whose brokenness was so seemingly self-evident and obscene that it boggles the mind it lasted as many months as it did. At least Mega Lucario had current gen blindness on its side. We should have known better with Genesect. Generation 7 came around and with its Z-moves provided Genesect even more ways with which it could dismantle the opponent. Thank goodness for that. It's not that Genesect needed the help, of course. It's more than with Z-moves around, who could possibly argue against Genesect's extreme brokenness? That wasn't all either. Genesect was, somehow, even better thanks to the addition of Tapus. It destroyed three of them one-on-one -on -one and abused grassy, electric, and misty terrain, especially electric terrain, which allowed its thunderbolts to shred through Toxapex with even greater ease. So it was certainly that Genesect would get the boot right away, right? Within the first couple of days of the generation's existence, alongside the likes of Lantern Incarnate and Zargar Complete, right? Right? Well, no. And as such, Genesect established itself as the OU metagame slasher villain. It kept coming back for sequels. And for some reason, the teenagers in the cabin acting as our metaphorical stand-in for the OU player base were none the wiser on how to stop it. If we want to continue the sci-fi theme, we can compare Genesect to the Terminator or Alien franchises, whose titular characters possess similar traits to slasher villains, both in ruthless efficiency of dispatching their victims and the fact that their moves never seem to end. The first sequel, fine, sometimes it takes a bit for the lesson to get hammered home. Everything after, guys, what are you doing? It's not that Genesect lasted particularly long in Generation 7 OU, it was banned fairly quickly, all things considered, but the fact that it had not yet earned a quick ban with all it was known to do and the fact that it just kept getting better was almost insulting. It kept coming back as if to ask us, when will you learn? The answer to that question was Generation 8 apparently. Genesect returned the Crown Tundra in a very different metagame. It had lost out on hidden power and Z-moves, and heavy duty boots being everywhere meant its U-turns wasn't going to be quite as devastating without hazard support. If this sounds like rationalizing, like desperate justification to find a reason why it wouldn't be insanely broken, it's because it is. These residual nerfs were nothing in the face of the massive death machine that was Genesect unleashed in OU. Losing hidden power didn't actually help check Genesect at all. Though it had been revealed at Team Preview, Genesect equipped with Douse Drive smashing through Heatran with ease, utilizing a brutally powerful Techno Blast. Just because he knew it had Douse Drive didn't help either. It's not like you could just go to your other Genesect check, because there was next to none to begin with, and if Heatran couldn't do it, nothing could. The fourth time was the charm apparently. Genesect finally received its well-earned, long overdue quick ban in Generation 8. It still took six days though. The story of Genesect is one of the tests that even defies belief. How can such a blatantly unhealthy, monstrous, stupefying, broken Pokemon be allowed to run rampant at all, much less time and time again? It is why the story of Genesect is one of caution. Do not take a metagame or the Pokemon within it for granted, nor should they be given a pass just because they are there. If you like this video, check out my previous one where I talked about the most insane item that Pokemon could bring back. Later.